In this video, we will show you how to replace your front steering knuckle. On this Chevy Tahoe, this will be located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing that you want to do is be in an area that you can safely raise and support the front of the vehicle. Once you have that wheel off the ground, continue on to removing all six of your lug nut covers and the lug nuts located behind them. We'll use a 22 millimeter socket. Now that we have the wheel off of there, we're going to start removing the caliper from the area. To do this, the first thing I like to do is use a small pry bar and come right inside this area of the caliper. Try to press the caliper away from the brake pad. We just want to get a little bit of movement here. Now we can start removing our caliper sliders. You'll find that you have two 18 millimeter sliders holding this in place. Remove the pair. Now that I have this one loose, I'll keep it in here. We'll continue up to the top. Remove your slider pins. Let's continue on with that small pry bar and gently pull the caliper out of place. Give your caliper a quick inspection. Make sure you do not see any brake fluid in this area. If you do, you have to replace the caliper. We'll set this aside, putting no pressure on the flex hose. Now we can remove our brake pads. We'll give those a quick inspection. Make sure it doesn't look like they're damaged or worn. Set those aside. Now we can continue on to removing our two 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. This one's loose, we'll leave it in. Remove your bracket. Now we can remove our brake rotor Now we can start removing the ABS sensor from its mounting bracket. For this, I'll use some long nose pliers, grab onto these two ears, give it a little twist and pull it out of place. Now we can follow this up the upper control arm. To easily remove this clip, we'll use a small flathead screwdriver. Get in this area to separate it. Continue following it up. Now up along the top of the strut tower is where you're going to find the connector. Before you disconnect this, you're going to find that it has a small tab that presses into the strut tower. Let's pry that out of place. Use a nice long flathead screwdriver for this. Get underneath it, pry it up. Go ahead and disconnect that electrical connector. We'll lift up on this tab, pry it apart, and give both ends a quick inspection for corrosion. We can pull this out of here. And at this point, we're just going to wrap this around here for now. Now we can move along to removing our 36 millimeter axle nut. Behind that nut, you'll also find you have a washer. With the nut off of there, let's continue on with a hammer and punch. Right in the center here, we'll break the axle free from the wheel bearing. Once you have movement in this area, move along to your outer tie rod end. To remove the outer tie rod end, we'll use an 18 millimeter socket to remove the nut. Then we'll continue on with a hammer along the knuckle to try to cause some vibration and break it free.
Now we can start removing our three 15 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the wheel bearing to the knuckle. For the top mounting bolt, we'll use a 15 millimeter wrench. Now we can leave this one in here as it lays and we'll continue on to the rearward mounting bolt. Now we can start removing the wheel bearing and the backing plate from the knuckle. For this, we'll use a pry bar and a hammer and try to break it free. Take hold of the wheel bearing and the backing plate and remove it from your steering knuckle. We'll set this aside. Now we can start removing our brake hose from the top of the steering knuckle. We'll use a 10 millimeter socket right on that bolt. Give it a couple taps with a hammer to cause some vibration. Give this a little wiggle, separate that. Continue on to your lower ball joint nut. We're going to loosen this, but leave it on just a couple threads. Use a 24 millimeter socket. Let's continue on to removing the axle from the front differential. On this, you're going to find that you have several 15 millimeter headed bolts holding it in place. Let's remove all of them. Take hold of that axle, give it a wiggle, and we'll slide it towards the differential. Let's continue on to our upper ball joint nut. Use an 18 millimeter to remove this. Continue on with a hammer. We're going to cause some vibration along where the upper ball joint connects to the knuckle being careful not to damage the upper ball joint in any way. Now that we've broken that free, we can continue removing our upper mounting bolt. Now let's use our hammer down along the bottom of the knuckle to separate this as well. Take hold of your steering knuckle, finish removing that ball joint nut. There it is, friends. All right, friends, let's get ready to install our brand new front steering knuckle. Let's put this in place. Start it on that lower ball joint. We'll put that nut on a couple threads. 
Let's bottom out that mounting nut. Start in your upper mounting bolt. Let's move along to our upper ball joint stud. Use a pry bar to pull this down into position. Start on our mounting nut. Let's snug that one as well. Now we'll torque that to 37 foot pounds. Now let's torque the lower ball joint nut to 74 foot pounds. Let's use a little bit of anti-seize along the splined area of the axle and inside of this area of the knuckle where the bearing is going to rest against. Let's install the wheel bearing. Once you feel as though you have it semi in place, continue on with your three mounting bolts. We'll start each of them in and then snug them up. Once all of them are snug, torque each of them to 133 foot pounds. We'll do the same to all. Let's take hold of our axle. We'll get it in place with our front differential. Align all six of our mounting bolt holes. Start each of them in, then snug them up. Once they're snug, go ahead and torque those to 58 foot-pounds. Do the same to all. Move along to reinstalling your outer tie rod end. We'll use our 18 millimeter to bottom out our mounting nut. Now we can torque this to 48 foot-pounds. Now we can start reattaching our flex hose to the top of the knuckle. Before we put this in place, let's use some anti-seize. Continue on with aligning it and putting in your one 10 millimeter headed mounting bolt. Once it's started, go ahead and snug it up. Now we can start reattaching our ABS wire. We'll take this and put it in place in the bracket. Continue following that up the control arm. Now let's reconnect our connector. Make sure that's secure and then press it into the hole on the top of the strut tower. Now the next thing we're going to do is clean down the mating surface of our wheel bearing hub surface here and the backside of our braking rotor, the areas that they mate together. We'll use a small sanding disc for this. Now we'll continue on with a wire brush. Try to get in between the studs and the center of the hub. Use a little anti-seize. Next, we'll install our brake rotor and one of our lug nuts to hold it in place. Now we can continue on to installing our caliper bracket. 
We'll get that in position, start in each of our mounting bolts and snug them up. Now we can torque each of these caliper bracket bolts to 129 foot-pounds. Now we can install our brake pads. When you're installing the pads, you want to make sure you put them in the original position. Typically, if you were to look at the backing, on one of the pads, you're going to see that you have two circles. And on the other side, you'll find the area that you have the three ears. The two circles are the inboard side. That's where the caliper pistons go. And then the three ears are along the outboard aspect of that caliper. Let's get these pads into position. Get that one in. Let's do the same to the outer pad. Now let's prepare our caliper for installation. I like to use a little bit of high temperature caliper grease along each of the two pistons and then along the inboard side of each of the three outboard ears. That'll help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Now we can slide this into place. Make sure you don't damage your caliper slider boots as you do so. Now it's a good idea to go ahead and lubricate those slider pins. Slide each of them into position, snug them up. Now that we have those snug, let's torque these to 80 foot-pounds. Now we can make our way back out here to our axle nut area. Start by putting on your washer. Continue on by starting the nut on there. Bottom this out by hand. Now once you have this snug, we're going to continue to torque it. You want to torque it to 177 foot-pounds. What you'll find is when you go to twist it, it's going to actually try to turn everything. So I just bring the vehicle closer to the ground, put a bar in between the lug studs diagonally down to the ground to hold it in place. Continue on to removing your lug nut. Now we can reinstall our wheel, install all six of our 22 millimeter lug nuts and snug them up. Now that I have them snug, we'll get the wheel back on the ground and we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. Reinstall your protective lug nut covers. Okay friends, we fully installed our front steering knuckle. At this point, you can go ahead and hop in the passenger compartment, pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test, make sure everything feels good, and take it down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.